Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to resolve the Windows 10 upgrade error message you might be getting that says that the installation failed in the second boot phase with the error pre-OOBE operation. That says that the installation failed in the second boot phase with the error during pre-OOBE operation. So if you haven't in this issue, hopefully in this tutorial I'm going to be able to address it without too much of a hassle here. And we're going to jump into it by opening up the start menu. Let's go on the start button one time. Type in settings. Type in troubleshoot. One of the best managers should come back with troubleshoot settings. Left click on that one time. Now on the right side you want to left click on Windows Update and then left click on Run the Troubleshooter. So it might prompt you that pending system changes that require a reboot have been detected. Left click on next. And if you see anything else in here, check for pending restart. It was detected. Just follow along with whatever it says here. Close out of here. Restart your computer. Hopefully that's been able to resolve the problem. Another thing you can try if we close out of here once you've restarted your computer and you're still experiencing a problem would be to open up the registry editor. So you just would left click on the start button and then type in regedit. So R-E-G-E-D-I-T. Best match to come back a registry editor right about desktop app. You just want to right click on that and then left click on run as administrator. If you receive a user account control prompt you want to left click on yes. Now whenever you're working in the registry I would highly suggest you create a backup of it before you actually make any modifications. So what I would suggest is left click on the computer that everything else drops below. So not the computer path name up at the top but right underneath it should say computer. Left click on that one time. And then go up and left click on the file tab. Left click on export. Now you can name this whatever you want. I would personally suggest naming it the date in which you're creating the backup. And then for export range select all. And then you want to save it to a convenient spot that you'll be able to easily access it in the event you ever wanted to restore your registry back to before you did anything in the registry. So save it to the desktop, external media source like a flash drive, CD, doesn't really matter to me. Left click on save to save it and then if you ever needed to go import the backup back in, left click on the file tab, left click on import. So instead of exporting, you're importing it this time. Locate the file and then just left click on open pretty straightforward. Uh, so once you're done with that you want to go ahead and expand the H key local machine folder. So either double click on H key local machine or left click on the little arrow to the left of it to expand the drop down. Then you want to go through the same thing for the software folder. Scroll down to get to the Microsoft folder here. Expand that one as well. And now you want to go left click on the provisioning folder. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. You don't want to expand it, you just want to left click on it one time. And now that you are highlighting the provisioning folder here, you want to right click on it. Left click on export. So you want to tape, do you want to type a name for this? So I would probably just suggest typing it provisioning, just the exact same name of what we are exporting here. So just for simplicity's sake, I would highly suggest you do that. I'm going to actually save it to my desktop just so we can easily visually see where everything's going here. And I would suggest you guys probably should do the same. Left click on desktop and then once you have your file name as provisioning or whatever you want, I personally would highly suggest you guys do provisioning for this particular part. Left click on save. So once you're done with that, now you want to go ahead and right click on the provisioning folder here. Left click on permissions. Again, we are still in the registry editor. We didn't actually do anything with our exported one yet. We just have that on our desktop, but I'm still in the registry editor here. So I right clicked on the provisioning folder and then left clicked on permissions. And now we have this new little pop up here that says permissions for provisioning. Now you want to left click on where it says, now where it says for special permissions or advanced settings, click advanced. Left click on advanced. Now, the owner should probably say system in your case. Left click on change. 
Now in the box where it says enter the object name to select, you want to go ahead and type in administrators. Exactly how it appears on my screen, it's very important to do that. So administrators. So A D M I N I S T R A T O R S. You guys can look it up on Google, dictionary.com, whatever you prefer. Just want to make sure you type in exactly how it appears on my screen here. Left click on OK. Once you are done with that, you should be able to check the box where it says replace owner on subcontainers and objects. So left click inside of that. And then you want to left click on apply. And once you're done with that, left click on OK. And before you click on OK, you want to left click on where it says disable inheritance. It's going to ask what would you like to do with the current inherited permission. You're about to block inheritance to this object, which means the permissions inherited from the parent object will no longer be applied to the object. So you want to go ahead and just left click on convert inherited permissions into explicit permissions on this object. So it was the first option in my case. And then once you're done with that, you want to check mark inside the box where it says replace all child object permission entries with inheritable permission entries from this object. So click inside of there, left click on apply. You're going to get a window security pop up here saying this will replace explicitly defined permissions on all descendants of this object with inheritable permissions from provisioning. Do you wish to continue? Left click on yes. And once you have done that, you are finally OK to left click on OK. And then you want to click on OK once more. Now that we are back in just the general registry editor, we don't have any more windows open here, you want to go ahead and right click on the provisioning folder, left click on rename. Now I would add a dot old on the end of this folder, so provisioning dot old, old, so again provisioning dot old, hit enter on your keyboard. Now you can close out of here, restart your computer and you should be good to go. So restart your computer, try to run the Windows 10 Upgrader again and see if that's resolved the problem. You might be wondering why we created a backup of the provisioning folder to our desktop. This is just an extra precaution, so not only did we create a backup of our registry, but we also created a backup of the provisioning subfolder itself. So let's say you forgot to backup the whole registry, at least you have a backup of this file. So if you messed one up, at least you got the other one. And honestly, this shouldn't be that big of a deal, but I like to just highlight it because we kind of got a little bit in depth for this tutorial. Feel free to rewatch the video, pause it, change the speed of it, but I feel like I was pretty thorough in our discussion here. So I do hope this brief tutorial was able to help you guys out. And as always, thank you for watching, and I do look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.